Foundation. Gary Coleman, Frank Messer, and I are on hand to bring you all the action. And this will be the final appearance of the Seattle Pilots here at Yankee Stadium this year. Actually, the final meeting of these two teams. And for Seattle, it'll be a former Yankee, Steve Barber, the left-hander. And for the New York Yankees, it'll be Al Downing, who has been very impressive in his last six appearances. Starting lineup for the Seattle Pilots, it'll be Tommy Harper leading off at third base. In center field and batting second, Steve Hobley. Wayne Comer will be the right fielder batting third. Hitting in the cleanup spot in left field will be Danny Walton. Greg Goosen at first base batting fifth. The catcher hitting sixth, Jerry McNerty. John Donaldson will be at second base batting seventh. Playing shortstop and hitting eighth, Ron Clark. And as we told you, the left-hander pitching in batting ninth, Steve Barber. For the Yankees, the red-hot Horace Clark leading off at second base. At shortstop and batting second, Gene Michael. The left fielder hitting third will be Roy White. Frank Fernandez doing the catching and batting cleanup. In right field and batting fifth, Bobby Mercer. Ron Woods will be the center fielder batting sixth. At third base, batting seventh, Jerry Kenny. Len Bamer will be at first base again, although Joe Pepitone is in uniform tonight. Bamer will be playing first and batting eighth, and pitching in batting ninth, Al Downing. And the lights are turned back on, and we're ready for baseball. The rain that uh, we had here this afternoon and earlier this evening has uh, done nothing to hurt the playing field. The infield, of course, was covered. And uh, the rain did benefit the fans a bit because it has cooled things off and cut down on the humidity. It's a very comfortable evening here at Yankee Stadium. Joe Pepitone is in uniform tonight, but is not in the starting lineup. He would be available for pinch hit duties or for regular duties, for that matter, should it become necessary and should uh, manager Ralph House decide to use him. Present temperature is 71 degrees. And uh, one of the happiest Yankees today is young Bobby Mercer. And the reason for his happiness, Bobby Todd Mercer, brand new bouncing baby boy, seven pounds, five ounces, born today in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And uh, Bobby Mercer's wife, Kay, and the baby, Bobby Todd Mercer, are both doing fine. And meanwhile, the proud Papa has hit four homers over the last six Yankee games. Leads the club and runs set it in with 71. He has 21 homers, three behind Pepitone's club leading 24. Mercer has hit four homers against Seattle this year. The most homers he has against one club is five, and he's hit five against Kansas City. And we have a new Yankee in uniform tonight, Ronnie Bloomberg, the Yankees' number one selection in the 1967 Major League Free Agent Draft. Reported to the club from Manchester of the Class AA Eastern League. He's in uniform tonight, wearing number 12. He hit 285 at Manchester with 19 home runs for the year. Right now, let's get down to this ball game as Tommy Harper steps in to lead things off for the Seattle Pilots. Tommy Harper is hitting 241. He's had nine home runs, 34 runs set it in, and he takes a strike. He has stolen 64 bases in 78 attempts. Right hand hitter. Drag one to Tommy Harper, Al Downing. Looks in to Fernandez, has the sign. Here's the next pitch. Pa a fastball is in for a call strike, and it's going two. No balls and two strikes. Ron Plaza is the first base coach for the Pilots, and Frank Crossetti coaches at third. Downing winds and throws. A check swing on a high fastball makes it one ball and two strikes. On deck is Steve Hobley, the center fielder. The Yankees have White in left, Woods in center, Mercer in right. Kenny at third, Michael at short, Clark at second, Bamer at first, Fernandez catching. Downing's one-two pitch, down low, two balls, two strikes. Two on two the count on Tommy Harper. Yanks lead the season series with Seattle, but barely. The Yanks have won six. Seattle has won five. Downing with a sign. Rocks, kicks, and deals. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Downing fans Tommy Harper, and there's one away here in the top half of the first inning. It will bring up Steve Hobley, the center fielder. 
Obley is a left-hand batter. He is hitting 279. Storm, hit sharply on the ground at first. Famer fields it cleanly. He'll make the play unassisted. Two out. And now the right fielder, Wayne Comer, batting 249. Comer has hit 12 home runs and has 44 runs batted in. The home run leader on the club is Don Mincher with 22. Comer is second with 12. They're the only two men in double figures. The pitch. He squares off as if to bunt and takes it low for a ball. Al Downing lifetime in the American League is 170 and lost 56. He has a 1-1 one one career mark against the Seattle Pilots. This year, Al won a game above 500, 5-4. Five Curve is hit high and foul down the left side. It will come down on the seats and out of play. Tonight's game winds up the current Yankee homestand. Tomorrow and Thursday will be off days for the Yankees. A uh, rarity, but a very welcome one as far as the ball players are concerned. Back-to-back -back days off. Then they open up with a doubleheader in Cleveland Friday evening. 1-1 one -one pitch coming. Hot foul coming back toward the upper deck. Fernandez gives it a short run behind the plate. The ball is in the seat. One ball and two strikes. Well, it was in the seat. It hit. Bounced back down on the screen. Downing takes the sign again from Frank Fernandez. Left-hander winds, kicks and deals. Swing and a miss, strike three. Downing strikes out Comer and retires the side in order. Nothing across for the Seattle Pilots. And at the end of the top half of the first, it's Seattle nothing and the Yankees coming to bat. Now here's a real smart idea for the real hot weather. A big summertime pack of Fields Real Draft Beer. You get a dozen 12-ounce cans and a nylon net bag. You can trail it off the side of a boat to keep your beer cool. Housewives, sportsmen, fishermen can use it for all sorts of things. What's more, those 12 cans are aluminum. They're faster chilling, compact, they won't rust either. And you don't get a tinny taste with aluminum. Just the lighter, fresher taste of Peel's Real Draft Beer. The taste that can't be beat. Ask for a summertime pack of Peel's Real Draft. A dozen 12-ounce aluminum cans in a handy nylon bag. Speaking of aluminum, Peel's is celebrating its success in the 1969 beer taste test by giving away six 15-foot aluminum polar craft boats. If you haven't entered the Peel's Aluminum Boat Sweepstakes yet, listen in for the details on these New York Yankee broadcasts. It's so easy, and you could be a winner. California 2 to nothing in the first game. California leads 1 to nothing at the end of two and a half of the nightcap. Baltimore at Chicago later on. Oakland at Boston, uh, delayed by rain. Cleveland at Minnesota and Detroit at Kansas City later on. The National League, Mets and the Dodgers on the West Coast. Cubs at Cincinnati. Phillies at San Diego. And the Cardinals down in Houston. All later starts. Those are the only games scheduled. Right now, we move to the bottom half of the first inning. Clark set to lead things off against left-hander Steve Barber. Barber making his second start this year against the Yankees. Clark hitting 3-0-2. The wind up on Barber and his pitch. Over but low ball one. We have a correction in the second game between California and Washington. The Senators are leading one to nothing at the end of one and a half. Pitch. Low, ball two. Barber has 109 victories in the American League. He has lost 93. 15 and 11 lifetime against the Yankees. He gets a strike in on Clark to make the count. Two balls and one strike. Barber's 19th game and 10th start. He is low, 3-1. He has a record 
this year, two wins and four losses, and an earned run average of 5.91. He has walked 35 and struck out 38 in 53 innings. and deals three and one to Clark. Half takes, ball four. Clark stood there in uh, conversation with the plate umpire, George Maloney. Steve Barber turns his back as if to say, where in the world could that pitch have been? is down at first base with a walk and it brings up Gene Michael, the Yankee shortstop. Michael hitting 273. Barber off the stretch. Goosen holding Clark on. The pitch is in for a call strike on Michael, batting right-handed. Played on by tonight is George Maloney, Ed Rungi at first base, Jim Odom at second, and Larry Barnett is at third. takes the sign again, sets just below the belt, wheels and deals, a fastball that's low, and the count is a ball and a strike to Gene Michael. There is no score in this ball game, bottom half of the first inning. Sort of hang loose when Barber's pitching, he's hit six batters this year. Throws to first, Clark gets back. Gene Brabender leads the Seattle Pilot pitchers and hit batsman with 12. He's big and he throws hard, too. Barber wheels it in, and it's hit on one. Hop to Harper. He rolls over and loses the ball. All hands are safe. Tommy Harper going to his left. Flag down. A tough chance. He hit the dirt, rolled over, and as his shoulder banged the ground, the ball popped out of his glove. It's a base hit. So Michael is on with a single. That Tommy Harper made a beautiful diving play to his left. But when he hit the ground and rolled over, the ball popped loose. Harper must be credited with saving the ball game early yesterday in the second contest for Seattle. He took what looked like a sure two-base hit away from Gene Michael. At the time, there were runners at second and third. He not only held the runners on, but he threw Michael out at first base with a fielding gem of that ball game. White steps in. The pitch drive. Fast ball is low. Ball one. Roy White hitting 295. Seven home runs. 63 runs batted in. He's batting now with runners at first and second and nobody out. Sets, brings it. Strike call, and it's one and one. Barber with a fastball, the slider, and used to have an excellent changeup. He looks back to second where Donaldson tried to sneak in behind Clark. Now Donaldson requests time and comes in to talk to Barber. Defensively, Mickey Walton is in left field, Steve Hobley in center, and Wayne Comer in right. The infield, Harper at third, Ron Clark at shortstop, John Donaldson at second, Greg Goosen at first, Jerry McNertney catching. Barber starts his move again. One one pitch, White takes over but low. Two balls and one strike. Clark at second, Michael at first. Harper playing a step in from the bag at third. Now backs off about a step. So he's just about even with the third base bag. 2-1 pitch to White. Fouled away to the seat on the right side. And the count is 2-2. Two two. This program is authorized under rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the New York Yankees is prohibited. and two strikes the count on Roy White the Yankee left fielder Frank Fernandez waiting on deck no score early in the ball game bottom half of the first the stretch by Barber and the 2-2 pitch White hits it in the air to center field Hopefully back and to his right under it Clark 
Clark's at second. Hopefully makes the catch. Throw coming to third base, and Clark is in standing. The throw was a bit off the mark, or they might have had a play. Third baseman Tommy Harper had to go to his left and leave the bag going toward left field to take the throw. They might have had a play on Clark. Michael held it first. And now with runners at the corners and one out, Frank Fernandez will step in. Fernandez hitting 226. He has 11 home runs and 27 runs batted in. Again, now at first base, with second base open, he will hold Michael on at first. Try to keep him as close as possible. Of course, Barber must cooperate. Steve straddles the bag. Now goes the rubber again. Looks over his right shoulder and delivers. Line foul just past third base coach Dick Hauser. and a strike to Fernandez. Barber looks down to McNerney. Set and delivers. There's the change up and it swung on and missed strike two. Yes, sir. It's cooled off to 71 degrees after that little bit of rain. some water in the outfield, but I don't think it up to uh, hurt the fielder's chances. Here's the pitch. Curveball. Breaking pitches in. Probably a slider. Unless Barber has developed a curve this year. He never did throw one. That was a strange thing. He threw that uh, slider for a breaking pitch. Fernandez is out on strike. Bobby Mercer steps for him. Mercer, brand new daddy. He's very proud of his new son, Bobby Todd Mercer. Seven pounds, five ounces, doing well in Oklahoma City. Mercer takes a strike, knee high, got the outside part of the plate. Bobby is hitting 258 with 21 home runs, and he leads the Yankees in runs batted in with 71. Pitch inside. Started to go for it. Laid off in time. One ball, one strike. Runners at first and third, two away. Here it comes. Foul back. Friday night. So 
September 12th. Starting at 5 o'clock, a twilight doubleheader and single games on Saturday the 13th and Sunday the 14th. The Yankees hopeful of overtaking the Red Sox for a third place finish. Those four games could have a lot to do with it. Danny Walton. It's the first pitch on a line out in the left center field. It's in for the base hit. Flagged down on one hop by Ronnie Woods. And Walton is on with a leadoff single. That is Walton's first major league base hit. He pinch hit twice with the Houston Astros last year without getting a base hit. And uh, he will get the baseball. The Seattle dugout calls for it. <laughs> Ronnie Plaza, really, the first base coach, called for it. And they will save that ball for Walton. Greg Goose in the batter now. And he lines one out into right field. Bobby Mercer tries to shoot three. The ball gets through him. the 
opinion, they thought that Kenny would become a good hitter. One, two, pitch. Popped up. Out behind second base. Horace Clark is after it. He's under it, back in the grass, waiting, and he's got it to retire the side. But the Pilots scored two runs on two hits. There were no errors and nobody left. And at the end of one and a half, the score is Seattle two and the Yankees nothing. Would you like to win a boat, a 50-foot aluminum polar craft ski king, big enough to accommodate your whole family? Well, here's what it's all about. I've been telling you how Beer's Real Draft couldn't be beat in the 1969 Beer Taste Test. Well, to celebrate their success, the Beer's people would like to give you a chance to win something now. So they're running this really exciting sweepstakes. During every Tuesday night game in Yankee Stadium, from August 5th to September 30th, I'll be drawing the name of a lucky winner from the names of the finalists drawn before the game. There'll be six games and six winners. There's nothing to buy, no jingles to write. All you do is put your name, address, and phone number on a postcard. Mail it to Peel's Aluminum Boat Sweepstakes, Box 85, Brooklyn, New York, 11207. That's Peel's Aluminum Boat Sweepstakes, Box 85, Brooklyn, New York, 11207. The sweeps that's Peel's Aluminum Boat Sweepstakes, Box 85, Brooklyn, New York, 11207. The sweepstakes is void where prohibited by law, and you've got to be 21 or older. You are? Then come on, take a chance, and good luck. Leading two to nothing, we're set to go to the bottom half of the second inning, and uh, sitting in alongside us right now is our good buddy Jerry Vale. Jerry, welcome to Yankee Baseball. Thank you very much, Frank. It's nice to see you again. Nice to be back here at Yankee Stadium. Looks like you've been out of the sunshine with that nice tan, a little golf maybe? Yeah, I was out in Las Vegas for three weeks, out in the sun in 115 degree heat. Oh, boy. All right, let's watch Ron Woods lead off the bottom half of the second for the Yankees. Woods hitting 180. He can go and get that ball in center field, but he's going to have to work on his hitting. Barber winds and delivers, and Woods takes down low ball one. One ball and no strikes. The Yankees having to play catch-up baseball tonight. The Pilots leading two to nothing. Steve Barber fires it in, and he's got a strike. Jerry, you have sort of a special interest in this game. We know you're a Yankee fan, but uh, you're also a good friend of uh, the opposing pitcher, Steve Barber. Yes, I have mixed emotions, Frank, about this one. I'd like to see Steve do well. He's a nice guy, and he's worked very hard. Of course, as you know and everyone else does, the Yankees are my team. right old. One ball, one strike to Ron Woods. Well, the last time Barber started against the Yankees, he did not survive the first inning. Now he's in the second, the pitch coming, and he is just a bit outside with it. Two balls and one strike. Jerry, what's in the uh, near future for Jerry Vale? I opened the Copacabana this coming Thursday night. Oh, great. For two weeks. 2-1 two pitch is down low, ball three. Three balls and one strike. For two weeks at the Copa. Yeah, two weeks uh, from the 4th to the 17th. To get a chance to see you down there when we get back on this road trip. Woods takes a strike to fill the count three and two. Barber looks down, has the sign from McNerty. Payoff pitch to Ron Woods. In time, he had a shadow center. In comes Holmley, still coming. He's under it now. Makes the catch. One down. And right now in New York Yankee baseball, we pause for station identification. This is your guy, High Agents. Join me afternoons from 3 to 7 for a little bit of something else. Right here on WGY Radio 81, Schenectady. Here is Jerry Kenny. We were talking about his feeling a while ago. First pitch to him. He bluffs a bunt and takes a ball low. Kenny is hitting 247. One ball and no strike pitch to him. 
He bluffs the punt again and takes inside this time. I tell you, I was I was rather gratified to hear what uh, Lee McPhail and Ralph Hawk said about Jerry Kenny, his play at third base, because uh, I tell you, I've said it several times on the air, from sitting up here and looking down, he has made all the plays. He has the very fine reflexes that a third baseman must have. Two-all pitch to him. He looks at a strike this time. Two balls and one strike.
tendency to find himself on the mound. Always has. Stretches. Check second. 3-2 pitch to Downing. Swung on and missed strike three. So Barber picks up his third strikeout. And for the Yankees in the second, no run to base hit. No errors and a man left. At the end of two, it's Seattle two and New York nothing. It will be pitcher Steve Barber to lead off for the Seattle Pilots, followed by Tommy Harper and uh, Steve Hopley as we go to the third inning. Against Al Downing with the Seattle Pilots leading two to nothing. Jerry, I know you have uh, quite an interest in baseball. Does it uh, carry over to the uh, other sports, football, basketball? Well, I like uh, football and basketball, but my favorite is baseball. I, I think I spend more time during the year watching baseball games when I can than I do any other sport. Well, I know we see you out here at Yankee Stadium uh, very, very often, and we're always happy to have you out. Well, it's always nice to be here. The, the folks here at Yankee Stadium are just great. I love to come by and say hello. And, of course, I have a great, great time. This is the only time I can really forget about my other business and relax. I'll tell you, a lot of people feel that. There's no no place you can relax quite like you get in the ball game. Here's the first pitch to Barber, and it's up high, ball one. Barber can help himself with the bat. He's hitting 313. Five hits and 16 trips, including one triple. He swings and misses the ball on a strike. Downing winds, kicks and delivers inside the barber. Two balls and one strike. Downing's next pitch. Long on him, missed strike two. started his baseball career in the Orioles organization. He had some good years in Baltimore, including one in which he won 20 ball games. 2-2 pitch to him. Over but low. Payoff pitch now. Swung on and missed strike three. Barber strikes up, and for Al Downing, strikeout number four. Tommy Harper steps in. Jerry, I want to thank you very much for stopping by and chatting with us. Hope you enjoy the rest of the ball game. Thank you very much, Frank. Real good to talk to you. Okay, and good luck in your next engagement. Thank you. Got the outside corner on Harper, strike one. One out, the base is empty. Bouncer right back to Al. He flags it down on one out. Throws over to Bamer in plenty of time. And that is all for Tommy Harper. Steve Hobley, the center fielder. He grounded out to Bamer unassisted in the first inning. Wayne Comer out on deck. Downing's pitch. Taken for a strike. Pilots leading two to nothing. Downing turns it loose again, and he's high and away with this one. One ball, one strike. Two outs, none on. And there's a pitch line to Michael, who makes a leaping catch at shortstop to retire the side. Graceful Gene Michael, a step to his right and up in the air about a foot to take a base hit away from Hobley. Three up, three down go the Pilots, nothing across. And at the end of two and a half, the score, the Pilots do and the Yankees nothing. The Yankees have the top of the order coming up in the third. Al, uh, Horace Clark leads it off. He walked his first time up and he takes a strike here. Turns another one loose. 
Seven and he's low this time. One ball and one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. One one pitch is high to Clark. Two balls and a strike. tonight, the Cubs and the Cincinnati Reds had to finish off an early season uh, suspended game, and evidently it is over now, the Cubs winning it 5-4. to four. There's a low pitch ball for and Clark draws his second walk of the ball game. That Cub-Reds game was suspended somewhere back in June to allow the Cubs to catch an airplane. They finished it off tonight, and the Cubs won it 5-4. Whether it was the Cubs or the Reds that had to catch the flame, but anyway, the game is over, 5-4 Cub victory. Gene Michael had an infield hit his first time up. He takes a strike here. Goosen holding Clark at first base. The Hawks has 24 stolen bases. He's been thrown out 12 times. one pitch to Michael. Hits on the ground, foul past third. At the end of three, the Senators lead the California Angels three to nothing. Washington won the first game two nothing. Clark leads away from first, draws a look from Barber, the pitch to Michael. He checks his swing and fouls it back. It was a barber changeup. It was high. Michael started to go for it, then tried to stop the swing, but made contact. The count holds. Nothing in two. Coming. Swung 
swung on and missed. Ball and two strikes. Yankees 
in the third. No runs, no hits. There were no errors and two men left. At the end of three, it's Seattle two and the Yankees nothing. On the scoreboard, Washington blank California two to nothing in the first game. Senators lead three to two at the end of four in the nightcap. Baltimore nothing, Chicago nothing. McNally against Peters. That's at the end of one. Oakland at Boston delayed by rain. Detroit did not score in the first inning of Kansas City. Mickey Lodich against Roger Nelson. In the National League, Cubs over the Reds, 5-4 to four in a game uh, suspended on June 15th. St. Louis leads Houston 2 to nothing at the end of one. Taylor against Griffin, and those are the only scores. In announcing tonight that... General Manager Lee McPhail and uh, Field Manager Ralph Howe could both sign new three-year contracts. Yankee President Mike Burke said, and we quote, This is not an unexpected announcement, I am sure. Ralph and Lee and I started out together three years ago to rebuild the Yankees into another championship team. We charted a course, knowing it would take time and patience, and sometimes a thick skin to withstand a certain amount of needling. We see clear evidence now that our Go Young policy was the correct one. We have boys in our organization now at the major and minor league levels who will write the next chapter of greatness in Yankee history. We continue to quote, we simply must follow through vigorously and intelligently with what we started. The extension of Ralph's and Lee's contracts is a part of our considered plan to build another winner. All of us got out of bed every morning with that one thought, that one objective in the front of our minds. And, like Burke said, in my book, Ralph is the best all-around manager in baseball. Lee is the complete general manager. Those comments from President Mike Burke of the Yankees in announcing tonight that Lee McPhail and Ralph House had contracts running through 1972. And now as we go to the fourth inning of this ball game, ready to move in and tell you all about it, here is Jerry Coleman. Jerry? Okay, Frank Messer and the first batter for the Seattle Pilots. The right fielder, Wayne Comer, and the first pitch to Comer is outside for ball one. Pilots are leading two to nothing. Downing ready. The next one is low and inside. Two and oh. Two balls, no strikes. Wayne Comer, right hand batter, struck out in the first inning. Downing has given up only two hits and he struck out four. But the single and the triple and the wild pitch cost him. Fastball right in there. Two balls, one strike. Downing ready, the 2-1 delivery. Three balls and a strike. Cursing at third base. Ron Plaza at first. Downing into the windup. The 3 1 pitch to Comer. On the ground. In the hole is Michael at short. He's got the time. And the throw is wide, but a great play by Bamer. Nails Wayne Comer. Bamer came off the bag and put the tag on Comer as he went by for the out. It was a fine play by both Michael getting to the ball and an even better play by Len Bamer making the tag. We have one away here in the top of the fourth, and that'll bring up Danny Walton, the young rookie who got his first major league hit in the second inning and scored ahead of the triple by Greg Goosen, and Goosen later came in on the wild pitch. Danny Walton, right-hand hitter, takes one on the corner for a strike. This young man looks like when he hits the ball, it'll go. 25 home runs in the American Association. Was a 335 hitter when he was called up. Here's the one strike pitch. Right in there, strike two. Downing ready, the two strike pitch to Walton is low. A ball and two strikes. for a sixth win, and Steve Barber going for only his third. Barber has not had a very good year. Here's the one-two pitch. Downing to Wall, he swings at the change of it, misses it, six. To right three, that's the fifth strikeout, and now let's pause for station identification. Hi, Harry Downey speaking. Every day it's music and mystery. Stay close weekdays, 10 to 11, 30 a.m. and 1 to 3 p.m. here on WGY Schenectady. 
Goosen, who hit that triple. It was an attempted shoestring catch by Bobby Mercer that got by him, and Goosen went for three. Later scored on the wild pitch. There's a drive to left. Oh, he tomahawked that one. That rattles off the wall. White is up with it, and Goosen digging for second. will be in there with a stand-up double. That Greg Goosen may not have the average, but he is a vicious swinger. You make a mistake with him, and he'll pound it down your throat. and a double. Now Jerry McNerney struck out in the second inning. Goosen at second. Pilots leading 2-0, fourth inning. And there's a sign on the board that says, Yankees welcome Jerry Vale. Just spent 10 minutes talking to him. <laughs> Very pleasant man. And a great entertainer. What a voice. We just get word that the Oakland-Boston game has been postponed because of rain. They were playing it in Boston. And that, of course, was to be the final game between these two ball clubs. They may have to play it tomorrow. Last time we'll see each other. The one-strike pitch. McNerney takes it high and outside, one and one. Shallow to the left fielder, way over by the line and left. 
Donaldson bounce to third in the second inning. Downing into the windup. Here's the pitch, and Donaldson on a half swing. It's called strike one. Backhand, it's a long leaping throw, not in time, and Donaldson has an infield hit. Good play by G, and he had no chance to get the speedy John Donaldson. So Donaldson gets himself a scratch single. Fourth hit off Al Downing. Now here's the shortstop, Ron Clark, who bounced to second in the second.
Here's the 1-0 pitch to Harper on the corner. Strike one. One and one. One ball, one strike. Well, we've been graced by the newest grandfather of them all, Silver Zitto. And it's going to be Howard Cosell. Yes, sir. There's a line drive. Kenny has it. And the side is retired. For the Pilots, no runs on a base hit, one left, and the score after four and a half, Seattle two and the Yanks nothing. I'd like to speak to you about your mixers. Here you are, living in the area that Saratoga Vichy made famous, and some of you aren't even using it. It's not that it's so bad for the Vichy people. They'll tell all they can turn out anyway. I'm concerned about your reputation as a party giver and your guests. Pity the poor things, sipping wan, wishy-washy drinks you've made up of tap water, or children's soft drinks, or some artificial fizz concoction. Ugh. They may drown your potted plants. Now, I'm perfectly aware that some of your guests may not be used to Saratoga Vichy. My suggestion is, give it to them anyway. At best, they'll develop a taste and learn to love it. And at worst, you'll find out who your real friends are, which the sooner known, the better. Saratoga Vichy in the green bottle with that yellow label. Groovy. Horace Clark is going to 
surpassed every offensive record he's ever had this year. He's really going to do a job. Now Gene Michaels. Clark at first. Yankees trailing 2 nothing, and Michael takes outside. Ball one. Clark has hit at a 333 clip over his last six games. He's now 14 for 40. Michael takes low and outside, 2 and 0. Clark has set personal highs this year in hitting, doubles, walks, stolen bases. And of course, he'll have more base hits. Batting at 302. Make it 303 for Clark. Michael takes high and outside, three balls and no strikes, and Steve Barber could be running into some trouble. The single by Clark, 3-0 to Gene Michael with one out. Michael, a better right-hand hitter than he is a left-hand batter. Clark dancing at first. Here's the 3-0 pitch, in there, 3-1. and one. Michael came into the ball game batting at 273 with a couple of homers and 26 RBIs. He's trying to get something started. The 3-1 pitch, and Michael hits a soft fly ball into center field. That's going to drop. Clark on his way to third. And running the ball in from the outfield is Wayne Comer. So it's one out. The Yankees have runners up first and third, and the batter will be Roy White. Two looping singles, one by Clark and the other by Michael, and Michael is now two for three. Fly to center and struck out. He's waiting now as Barber is rubbing up the ball. The Yankees with a tying run to honor trailing two to nothing. The Yankees have just come up for their fifth base hit. Barber has walked three, struck out five. Roy White waiting from the right side. The pitch by Barber is hit high in the air in the right center field. Waiting for it is Wayne Comer tagging up his spark. The throw goes to second base, and the Yankees pick up a run, and it's now a two-to-one ball game. Roy White picking up his 64th RBI of the year on a sacrifice fly to the right fielder. It's now a one-run ball game. Pilot two, Yanks one, last of the fifth, two outs. Here's Frank Fernandez, who struck out and walked. Cubs hung on to win and beat Cincinnati 5-4. Their 
are playing the regular game now. The Cubs lead one to nothing after one. Kessinger homer for Chicago. In the other action underway right now, Cardinals five and Houston nothing after two and a half. So that's it in the National League. Wayne Hobley, like that Steve Hobley, now has a one ball, two strike count. Left hand hitter against the left handed Al Downing. Here's the pitch, and Hobley takes it outside. Two and two. Curve just did miss. The 2 2 pitch to Hobley. Curve is in there, strike three, and he just walks away. A booming curveball, number six for Downing on the strikeout department tonight. First time that a man has taken a call third strike. The first five were on swinging strike three. Now Wayne Comer steps in. He struck out and bounced to short. Right hand hitter swings and misses at the first pitch. Strike one. Downing's personal high this year in strikeouts in one game is eight on August the 19th. That was at Kansas City. The one strike pitch. Homer takes it for strike two on a foul tip. Sort of a check swing. Just hit, hit the bat. Ready now into the windup. The Yankee left hander delivers low. A ball and two strikes. Manager Ralph House in the press conference that announced the three year additional contract to both Lee McPhail and Manager Ralph House said that Downing was certainly the most pleasant surprise they've had this year with his arm getting well and coming back into the form they've known for many years. There's a foul off on the right side and the count holds at a ball and two strikes. Downing back on the beam, and what a job he has done. He's won four and lost just one since being inserted into the Yankee regular starting rotation on August the 2nd, and has had a 1.11 earned run average in that time. Given up only six earned runs in 48 and two-thirds innings before tonight. Fastball misses inside to Wayne Comer. Two balls and two strikes. Misses again for three and two. On the year, the Yankees are six and five against the Pilots. They've won six and lost five. If they lose tonight, they'll split the season. If they win, they'll hold a two-game edge on the Pilots, seven to five in the 12-game play. Outside ball four, and Comer draws a walk, and while we wait for Danny Walton to come up, it's New York Yankee baseball. Let's pause for station identification. This is your guy, High Agent. Join me afternoons from 3 to 7 for a little bit of something else right here on WGY Radio 81, Schenectady. Wayne Comer gets the first walk from Downing, and now Danny Walton, who's one for two, swings at a curve and misses strike one. This young power-hitting right-hander for the pilot. He's seeing some pitching like he's never seen before. He had a fine year in the American Association, but he will have to adjust to a lot of these top major leaguers now. Fastball on the corner, strike two. Danny Walton got his first major league base hit in the second inning. He's one for eight so far since being recalled from Oklahoma City. Waiting, down it kicks and fires. There's a high drive, right center field. Bobby Mercer with a beat on this one is waiting and makes the play. Two down. Now here comes the man who's given Downing a lot of trouble. He tripled to drive in a run and later scored on a wild pitch. So he drove in one and scored one of the two runs that the Seattle Pilots have right now as they lead in this game two to one and then they doubled in the fourth. He's two for two tonight. Attempted pickoff of Comer at first does not work as Downing sets again. Goosen takes inside for a ball. 
Gleason, the ex Met, two for two, batting at 280. Right hand batter holds the bat on the end. Downing delivers, and Gleason goes after the changeup and misses. Strike one. A one and one. Top of the six. Pilots, two runs, four hits. The Yankees, one run, five hits. Again, Goosen swings and misses. Flips the fastball by him at the belt for a ball and two strikes. This big guy, you've got to get him off stride or he can hurt you. The one-two delivery now is Downing is at the belt again. Checks Comer. Here it comes and Goosen swings and misses strike three and that's number seven for Downing. So Al remaining sharp for the pilots. No runs, no hits, no Yankee errors and a man left. Score after five and a half. Seattle two, Yankees one. He will... Into the bottom of the sixth inning, Frank Fernandez returns. He was up there when Michael was picked off attempting a steal, so it'll be Fernandez, Mercer, and Wood. Steve Barber all the way for the Pilots, Al Downing all the way for the Yankees. A tight one with the Pilots leading now, two to one. Bottom of the sixth. Fernandez takes the first pitch outside, ball one. Barber moving right along the 1-0 delivery. Right in there, one ball, one strike. Fernandez struck out and walked. Harper at third, guarding the line tight. Outfield deep, pull to the left as Fernandez takes a changeup outside, two balls and one strike. Frank is catching his, or well at least he's playing in his 72nd game. He's played a couple of games in right field. There's a swing and a miss by Frank. Two balls and two strikes. Sign on the board says Donnemeyer leads the league with 21 complete games and he pitched his 21st yesterday as he won his 18th. The 2-2 pitch on the way by Barber to Fernandez. He swings at a curveball and misses. Strike three. Strikeout number six for Steve Barber. Now here's Bobby Mercer who flied the center and struck out. into the windup, and there's a half swing call, strike one. And Bobby questioned the call of the plate umpire, George Maloney. Fernandez has struck out 56 times in 192 at bat. Strike two to Mercer. as he has walked. The two-strike pitch to Bobby. A sailor that misses outside. It was really a sharp slider. Moved away from Mercer for a ball and two strikes. Barber, ready again. Mercer waits. Curve in the dirt, two and two. We'll have a rundown on all the scores right after this half inning in both the American and the National League. Takes his cap off, wipes his brow, pitches up his belt, gets the sign. Mercer waiting, swinging that bat, digging in. Steve Barber ready. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Bobby, and it's a curve that's outside, and that's the one that Steve Barber wanted. He just missed the corner. Three and two now to Mercer. On deck, Ron Wood. The 
Rivera pitch to Bobby. Here it goes. Number 22 way back there. And it's in there.
Two strikes on McNerty. Downing stretch just missed the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. Pilots scored two in the second. The Yankees one in the fifth. And in the sixth, Bobby Mercer picked up his 22nd home run of the year. Let's see, how many does that give the Yankees now? 83. There's a ground ball hit to third. Jerry Kenny has it. Fires to first. One out. John Donaldson bounced to third, had an infield single. Donaldson, a left-hand batter. Downing's pitch is inside, ball one. On deck, Ron Clark. There's the strike. One. And Ted Williams has the Senators playing great baseball. Won the first game two to nothing. Made the second three to two at the end of five. There's a pitch low up the shin guards of Fernandez. Two balls and a strike. Frank Rossetti comes in, picks it up. Looks at it and flips it back to Downing. Hot Washington Senators come into Yankee Stadium the 17th and 18th of September, Wednesday and Thursday nights. A fly ball to shallow left field. Roy White coming on, makes the running catch. Nice play by White. Green is starting to come down a little harder right now, and the fans are scurrying. Been up twice, both times popped the second base. Boo Powell has just hit his 35th home run of the year and the fifth with none on. And Baltimore is leading Chicago 2 to nothing. High foul, that'll go back in the seat and out of play. Had quite a bit of rain this afternoon. And it stopped just before game time. It had been drizzling throughout the game. Now it's coming down a little hotter. Downing's pitch popped up. Morris Clark back. And Clark calling for it for the third time. Does Clark pops up to Clark. That's Ron Clark to Horace Clark. Three up, three down. The score at the end of six and a half. Seattle two and the Yankees two. Participating Atlantic dealers are offering a great bargain on stainless steel tableware. A four-piece play setting of fine stainless is yours for only 99 cents every time you get eight gallons of gasoline. And that's not all. With every play setting of dinner fork, salad fork, teaspoon, and knife, Atlantic dealers are giving away absolutely free an extra teaspoon. But the best thing of all is the stainless tableware itself. It's heavy-duty, rugged stainless, designed to give a lifetime of service, and so carefully crafted and beautiful to look at that it will go with even your most elegant table settings. All of this for only 99 cents a place setting, with a fifth piece, the extra teaspoon, thrown in as a gift. That's a real steal. In fact, it's a stainless steel. So take advantage of it soon. Matching accessory pieces are available, too, and you can charge everything on your Atlantic Richfield credit card. What are you waiting for? This offer may vary in some states. While we get ready for the bottom of the seventh, before we start the seventh, got some fans write us about an unusual situation. Say Chicago's playing Cincinnati. And the pitcher for Chicago gives up six runs to Cincinnati. And then the game is suspended because of uh, curfew or something. And oh, a month later, they play, and that pitcher has been traded to Cincinnati. Well, he can come in and pitch the remainder of that game for Cincinnati, even though he had been knocked out of the box for the White Sox earlier that year. And another tricky question, he could be the winning and losing pitcher as Bamer tries to bunt and fouls it off. 
Chicago. Not the White Sox, the Cubs. What I say, Chicago and Cincinnati. Oh, I didn't mean to say the White Sox. But actually, he could be the losing pitcher, giving up six runs to Cincinnati. We'll have to figure this one out later, but Len Bamer fouls one over our heads. And out of play, strike two. Bamer has doubled and hit into a double play. Swing foul, 0-2. The two-strike pitch. Hit in the air to shallow right field. Donaldson moves back. Is under it, makes the catch. Bring up Al Downing. Downing has struck out and popped to first base. Chevelle Court in a colorful courtesy cart and select 
select your new Chevy at your leisure. Then you really go to town because Salisbury makes it so easy to own the Chevy you want. Walk, drive, or fly to Salisbury Chevrolet at Schenectady County Airport, Route 50, Scotia. Well, Gus Gill is coming up to bat for Steve Barber. And as we told you, Barber did a real fine job. He worked seven innings. Which he allowed seven hits, walked three, struck out seven, and allowed two runs. Gus Gill coming on. Looks like Barber was pitching very well. Downing's pitch is popped up. Back of the plate, Fernandez got a shot at it. Coming back to the screen, he's there, makes the catch just in front of the screen. One pitch and one out. up Tommy Harper. Harper is struck out. Hit to the box and line of third. One man out. Downing stretch is on the outside corner. Strike one call. 7,071 pay tonight. Weather, as we told you, had been threatening all day and had had a lot of rain, held the crowd down. There's a pitch outside, one on one. Downing's one one delivery, he bunts, and it's foul. Picked up by Frank Fernandez on the first hop, but it was foul. Tommy Hopper trying to get his first hit of this series. Yankees have been able to keep him off the bases and keep him from stealing. In the second game of the twin bill yesterday, he walked twice and scored both times. That shows you how dangerous he is when he does get on. Even though he did not steal a base, he has 64 stolen bases to lead the majors. The one-two pitch. High foul. Fernandez got another shot at this one. He's got the room and makes the catch and it's two out. Very seldom do you see two foul balls in a row hit back to the catcher, but there it was. And here's Steve Hobley over three, bounced to first, lined to short, and struck out. So two out, nobody on. 2-2 two -two the score. Top of the eighth. Pitch in there, strike one call. Curve is bounced to the shortstop. Gene Michael gets the big hop, fires to first in time. And another one, two, three inning for Al Downing. At the end of seven and a half, it's Seattle two and the Yankees two. With all the hooks on, about Saratoga Vichy, Saratoga Ginger Ale does tend to get upstaged, which is a pity, because in its own mellow, unassuming way, Saratoga Ginger Ale is quite as distinctive a product as its better known sister, or brother, if you prefer. It's a richer, more flavorful ginger ale than all of its assembly line competitors. The reason is, I'm told, that the Saratoga people insist on only purest Jamaica ginger. In any case, you can see a subtle difference in the color, which is a proud, sunshiny gold, rather than an off-white or some murky amber. Why, in this era of play safe, please everybody products, do the Saratoga people make a ginger ale that's different? Well, when you're known for a product like Saratoga Vichy, it would hardly do to make a ginger ale like everybody else's. Eddie Layton's playing on the uh, organ right now. He said he was going to play that, too. Wait a minute, Bill. I want to hear the rest of this song. They played Irish Eyes This Morning. I was quiet for you. At least you can show some respect for Way Marie. Okay, Eddie Layton.
Clayton, thank you very much. Who's pitching, Bill? Bob Locker has come on to do the pitching. Bob Locker takes over for Steve Barber. He'll be facing Roy White, Frank Fernandez, and Bobby Mercer here in the bottom of the eighth. Robert Autry Locker. Born March 15, 1938, at Hull, Iowa. He now lives in George, Iowa. Well, there's two cities I never heard of. Hull and George. But he's 6'3 and 195 pounds and cornbread. Is that the way you say it, Sammy? Corn? No, that's cow. Sears are cornbread. A lot of wheat and corn out in Iowa, though. He's a graduate of George High and also a graduate of Iowa State University with a B.S. in geology. Pretty smart young man out there on the mound. Hyde Roll White has fly to center, struck out, and hit a sacrifice fly. He drove in the first Yankee run of the game in the fifth inning. It's a ground ball to second baseman Donaldson. On one hop, he's got it throws to first, one out. One pitch, one out. And now Frank Fernandez. Frank has struck out twice and walked. was acquired from the Chicago White Sox on June the 7th of this year. They got him for Gary Bell, and Locker has done quite a job for Seattle. Fernandez takes the strike. Frank had a rough time against Steve Barber. We told you Steve had seven strikeouts. Pitched a beautiful ball game. This is swinging a foul back. Nothing in two. that Barber had injured himself or that he was tired the way he was throwing. Now the two-strike pitch. Brown ball hit the short. Off the glove of the shortstop, Ron Clark. And Fernandez will be on. And Eric drives to the shortstop, Ron Clark. That ball took a nice hop right up into the glove, and he had it, and then it just in slow motion rolled out of the glove and dropped in back of him. And here he is, Bobby Todd Mercer. No, this is Bobby Ray Mercer. The new baby is Bobby Todd. And uh, Mercer has fly to center, struck out, and hit his 22nd home run of the year. That tied up the game in the sixth inning. Bobby now with 72 runs batted in. Fernandez at first, one out. Two to the score. Locker set, pitch to Mercer, strike one call. On deck, Ron Woods. Goosen is not holding Fernandez too close to first base. Locker set, the pitch swing and a miss at a good changeup. Nothing in two. Bobby Mercer will be flying back to Oklahoma to visit with his wife and his new son. And they have a baby daughter. He'll be telling that youngster all about the home run he hit tonight. All right, locker ready for the two-strike pitch. Strike three. And right now we pause for station identification. Hi, Harry Downey speaking. Every day it's music and mystery. Stay close weekdays, 10 to 11, 30 a.m. and 1 to 3 p.m. here on WGY's Connectivity. All right, Ron Woods has fly to center, follow the catcher, bounce to third. Deck Jerry Kenny. Fernandez leads away. Pitch to Woods is low ball one. Two men are out. 
Watch by Laka. Pitch is on the outside corner, one on one. After five innings, Kansas City three, Tigers two. Washington won the first game over the Angels, two nothing, lead the second, three two, and a five. Baltimore leads the White Sox three nothing and a five. Laka set. Pitch is inside. Two and one. Oakland at Boston postponed because of rain. And Cleveland and Minnesota no score and a three. The Cubs won their completion of the suspended game from Cincinnati five to four. And in the second game, it's the Cubs won Cincinnati nothing and a three. Cardinals lead Houston five to one and a four. Other games later on out on the West Coast. Two-two the score, bottom of the eighth. Lockers pitches bounce back to the pitcher on one hop. He fires to first. That's all for the Yankees. No runs, no hits. One error, one man left. At the end of eight full innings, it's Seattle two and the Yankees two. allowed only four base hits but as we told you in the second inning they combined the single by Walton and the triple by Goosen and a wild pitch by Downing to get their two runs All right, Comer struck out, bounced a short walk, hits one deep to left field Ron Woods coming over calling for it and one hands the ball, it was a little airy of Roy White but Roy listens very well to whoever's playing center field and he got out of his way in a hurry Brings up Danny Walton, single to left center in the second. That was his first big league hit. Struck out in the fourth, fly deep to right in the sixth. One out, nobody on. Downey kicks, delivers a drive deep to left field. If it stays fair, it's gone. And it's a uh, home. Association before being called up yesterday by Seattle. He puts the pilots out front three to two. Boy, he hit a towering home run. That ball was way up there and deep into the seat. Here's Greg Goosen, who has tripled, doubled, and struck out. He fouls one off the end of the bat, strike one. As we told you before, he got his first hit in the second inning, a single, and naturally that's his first major league home run. And with that stroke, especially in that Seattle ballpark, he's going to have quite a few home runs. Nobody on. Downing pitch low. One on one. Nice home runs besides Bobby Mercer and Danny Walton, and Tommy Tresh of the Tigers, Lee May and Frank Howard of the Senators. Jim Northrop of the Tigers. A bouncer foul down the third baseline. One ball, two strikes. Frank Crosetti comes in, flips it to plate umpire George Maloney, who flips it back to Downing. Three to two, the pilots lead. We're in the top of the ninth. Donnie kicks high and tight with a fastball. Two and two. The two-two pitch. 
pitch. Change up is high, ball three, full count. Fresh supply of baseballs brought up to plate up by George Maloney. George Maloney, the plate umpire, a Bronx boy. The payoff pitch is bounced slowly down the third baseline if it stays fair, but it goes foul. It would have been a base hit. Look at that Cousin really digging down to first, but the ball kicked foul. Kenny was playing deep with two strikes on him. George Maloney went to Powell Memorial High School. That's the same high school I believe Lou Alcindor went to. That's right. and just now getting back to home plate. Still three and two. Once again, we'll have the three-two pitch. Downing winds, here it is, and it's inside ball four. The second walk given up by Al. We look ahead to the Yankees in the uh, bottom of the ninth. They'll have Kenny, Beamer, and then a pinch hitter for Donnie. We're going to have a pinch runner for Greg Goosen. Could be Ray Oiler, but uh, we'll wait. And... Mike Keegan, that's who it is. Mike Keegan, and Mike can also play first base. And he wrecked the Yankees in yesterday's second game, a base hit that tied it up in the ninth, and then a three-run homer in the 13th. Bounce of foul. Keegan, a good base runner, leads off first. Downing's pitch, swung at it, missed. Strike two. Jerry McNitney struck out, bounced to short, bounced to third. Keegan with a good lead. Pops one in the air. Horace Clark digging back, digging back. He's not going to get it. Drops in for a base hit. Horace Clark trying to make a catch with his back to the infield. Couldn't reach it. And McNerty pops a little Texas linger, leaguer in a shallow right center. Sixth hit for the pilots. And now John Donaldson bounced to third, singled and fly to left. Runners at first and second. and second. It's the Donaldson strike call. One out. One strike on Donaldson. Downing set. Delivers a check swing, but it's in there. Strike two. Taking a little extra time. Here's the stretch. High with the fastball. One ball, two strikes. On deck, Ron Clark. Wheels around, throws the second hole, and it gets away from Clark. 
And Hegan cannot go. He had dived back into the bag. And Bama came all the way over to retrieve. Heads up play by Len Bama. Horace couldn't locate the ball. A good throw would have had Mike Hegan that time, but Downing threw it in the dirt, kicked off the knee of Horace Clark, high in the air. But Hegan, who had scrambled back on all fours to the bag, couldn't get up and break for third. So the count, one ball, two strikes, one out. Three to two, the pilot's lead, top of the ninth. Downing sets. The pitch is swung at and missed strike three. Strikeout number eight for Al Downing. And that's the most strikeouts Downing has had in any one game this year. I was back on August the 19th against Kansas City. Ron Clark, three times he's been up and three times popped to second base. You bet us. Downing set. The pitch foul just below it. up the new baseball. Egan leads off second. McNerty off first. Downing's pitch swing and a miss. Strike two on a good changeup. Both Downing and Steve Barber who started at beautiful change of paces tonight. the ring. 
rain hot again here at the stadium. The 3-1 pitch. Ball four. Kenny is on. And Joe Pepitone is coming up to bat for Lynn Bama. Joe Pepitone, who was reinstated for tonight's game. The last game he played was on Saturday, August 23rd, and he's missed the last nine Yankee games. And you can hear the crowd. Nobody excites the crowd here at Yankee Stadium like Pepitone. One way or the other. Pepe batting 248. 15 doubles, 3 triples, 24 homers. 64 runs batted in. Nobody out. Here's the stretch. It's to Pepe. Ground ball hit hard. Oh, what a play by Egan. He has to throw to first. In time to get Pepe, but he took a base hit away from Pepitone. Joe hit a bullet on the ground, and nobody but Mike Egan could have made that play. Beautiful play by Mike. Quick reflexes. At second base is Jerry Kenny, who slid hard, and he is getting up slowly. He slid late in his second base, and those bags don't move. Coming up to bat for Al Downing. Jimmy Hall batting 227. Has seven doubles, five triples, three homers, 26 runs batted in. Kenny, the potential tying run at second base. One out, three to two, the pilots lead. Bottom of the ninth. Stretch by Lockett. His pitch inside, ball one. Only one man out. Parker gets the sign. Here's the stretch. The pitch is fouled back in the upper deck behind home plate. One on one. All right, Eddie Layton played the charge call. Let's see if the Yankees can charge right now from behind. They trail three to two. Locker sets the pitch way outside, ball two, two one. Two balls, one strike. Locker sets. The pitch is popped up. Second baseman John Donaldson is under it. He's got it. There are two away. And with two out, the battle will be Horace Clark, who has walked twice, singled and fly to center. Second base, the pilots leading three to two. G. Michael is on deck without his hat. All right, locker ready now. Tough man up there, Horace Clark. Here's the stretch. It's the Horace bounce ball outside of first. Elson Howard knocks it down. Goes back to pick it up. Ellie flips it back to Bob Locker. One strike on Horace Clark. 
They give Horace a lot of room down the right field line. And Hobley is playing a very, very shallow center field. Man, he is way in. So is Danny Walton in left field. Homer fairly deep in right. Like I said, the pitch is lined to right field. And in for a base hit. And he comes on to score and the ball game is tied up. At 3-3. to three. That was the first hit off Bob Lockett since he came in to relieve Steve Barber. And Horace Clark gets his 161st base hit of the year and one of the biggest all year. His 42nd run batted in. The score is tied 3-3. And the batter, Gene Michael. And that base on balls came home to haunt 3-3. Both teams had scored here in the ninth inning. Pilots on a homer by Danny Walton. The Yankees on a walk. A ground out. Two-out single by Horace Clark. Stretch by Locker. The pitch is taken low. Ball one. The White Sox scored nine runs in the sixth inning. Baltimore pitching. Oh, we'll give you all the scores at the end of this half inning. All right, ready for the 1-0 pitch. There goes Clark, pitch out, and they can't get him. How do you like that Horace Clark? They pitched out, and McCurdy didn't even throw the ball. Horace gets his 25th stolen base of the year. second with two outs, two balls, no strikes on Gene Michael. McNerty called for the pitch out. He went out and gloved it one hand and then couldn't get the ball out of his glove so decided not to throw. Here's the stretch. The pitch on the inside corner, 2-1. They get Gene Michael a lot of room down the right field line. Boy, that Wayne Comer is well over in right center. He's right even with the Yankee bullpen. Lockett set. The pitch swung at and missed strike two. Two and two. On deck, Roy White. to come down again. Here's the stretch. The pitch, he checked it. They're walking off the field, the pilots, but played up by a Maloney said, no, ball three. Joe Schultz jumped out of the dugout, goes back down again. The whole Seattle team started to walk off the field, thinking G. Michael had swung. Two strikes, two out. 3-3 three, three the score, bottom of the ninth. The Cubs now out in front of Cincinnati in the second game, 4 to nothing. Here's the stretch by Locker. The pitch line is center field, but right there is Hobley, and he makes the catch of a hard-hit line drive. But the Yankees tie it up with one run, one hit. There were no errors and a man left. And at the end of nine full innings, it's Seattle three and the Yankees three. Jack Aker has come on to do the pitching, and Joe Pepitone stays in the game at first base as we pause for station identification. with Jack Aker on the mound for the Yankees. A 3-3 ball game, top of the 10th. 
Hager's first pitch is taken low ball one. Hager with the Yankees has one seven lost three and has had eight saves with a 1.89 earned run average. His pitch is bounced for the shortstop. Michael comes in, has it, fires to Pepitone, one out. Bring up Tommy Harper. Tommy Opal four struck out, hit to the box line of third, foul of the catcher. So these same two teams, the Pilots and the Yankees, battled 13 innings in the second game yesterday. And we're in the 10th inning here tonight. Pitch to Harper is low ball one. Winds his pitches line is a base hit in the right center field. And Bobby Mercer up with it, fires it in, and Hop is on with his first hit of the series. A line shot to right center. Now here is the Major League's leading stolen base. In stealing. He's the base stealer, the leading base stealer in the big leagues with 64. This will be his first opportunity to try and steal a base in this series. One man is out. I know he's walked, Bill, but there were men on base. He was sacrificed over once by Hobley on the first pitch. Throw the first hopper back just in time. The other time he walked with a man on second, so he couldn't steal. He takes a big lead at first base. Stretch by Aker. The pitch is swung on and missed strike one. Hobley's over four. Bounced the first line to short. Struck out and bounced to short. One man out in the top of the tenth. Aker sets. The pitch is swung on and missed strike two. didn't try to go on the first two pitches. Quick throw to first base. Oh, good play by Pepitone. Boy, that Peppy caught it on one hop, fell over Harper, and that ball, had it gotten by, it would have allowed Harper to go all the way to third base. Fine save by Pepitone. the plate and Harper was going that time or does he get a quick jump still nothing in two on Steve Hobley Pepitone fell quite heavily on Tommy Harper Tommy rubbing the right leg I one man out three three to score we're in the top of the tenth Aker in relief of Al Downing, and Downing worked nine beautiful innings again. Pitch out, but Harper was not going. It's one ball, two strikes. Al allowed only six base hits, walked only two, struck out nine, which is his high for the year in strikeouts in one game. He allowed all three runs. Harper with a big lead. Ready for the one-two pitch. He's going. The pitch is low. Fernandez throw is low, and he's out at second. And Gene Michael again caught that ball on a short hop, and he makes as quick a tag at second base as any shortstop you'd want to see. Fernandez had to get rid of the ball in a hurry. He threw it low, but Michael scooped it out of the dirt and put the tag on Tommy Harper. Two outs. Two to the count. Pilots, no runs, a base hit, no errors, nobody left. And at the end of nine and a half, it's 
the Pilots 3 and the Yankees 3. All right, Roy White will lead it off, and Diego Segui is out on the mound. Bob Locker worked two innings. He allowed only one hit, but that the hit by Clark that drove in the run. He walked only one, and that was the man that came in to score. Struck out one and allowed one run. So Roy White, who is flying to center, struck out, hit a sacrifice fly, and bounced to second. We'll lead off for the Yankees here in the bottom of the tenth. Diego Segui. making his 52nd appearance of the year. He has won nine and lost five. Segui taking his warm-up crosses. through yet. Green comes down and stops. Segui's full name is Diego Pablo Segui. He was born in Cuba and now lives in Kansas City, Missouri. Six feet tall, 180 pounds. left-handed against the right-hand of Segui. On deck, Frank Fernandez. Roy takes the pitch, high ball one. up 
by Segui. The kick, the pitch is high, and it's even at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Outfield deep and around towards left on Fernandez. 2-2 pitch is fouled out of play and back of the plate. Wayne Comer has moved way over now. He's in front of the auxiliary scoreboard in right center field. Fernandez very seldom, if ever, hits the ball to the right of second base. Two balls, two strikes. Segui ready, the windup. Fastball swung at and missed strike three. Fernandez goes down for the third time tonight. First strike out by Segui, and here's Bobby Mercer. Bobby is fly to center, struck out twice, and homered. His 22nd home run of the year. now so he doesn't miss that plane to Oklahoma and now McNerty goes out to talk with Segui very short huddle out on the mound it's got to be a short huddle McNerty doesn't know too much Spanish Two men out, nobody on. 3-3 three, three to score, bottom of the 10th. Outfield deep now and around towards right. Wayne Comer with his back almost against the 344-foot sign. Mercer takes the pitch outside, ball one. Ron Woods on deck. His next pitch, swing and a miss, one-on-one. One. Bobby couldn't hold up on the fork ball. All right, all ready now for the one-one pitch. The high kick, the pitch, swing and a miss, and another fork ball, a ball and two strikes. Finger and the middle finger of whichever hand you're pitching with comes out like a knuckleball. There it is again, a swing and a miss. McNerty drops it, throws to first in time, and Bobby Mercer is struck out for the third time tonight. Three up, three down for the Yankees, and at the end of ten full innings, it's Seattle three and the Yankees three. will be working to Wayne Coma, Danny Walton, and Mike Hegan in the top of the 11th. Comer has struck out, bounced to short, walked and fly to center. Pitch to Comer is a curve in there, strike call. has got to be tough on right-hand batters. Jack winds the pitch on the outside corner, strike two. He started him off with a curveball and a fastball, both of them nipping the corner. On deck, Danny Walton.
think his pitch is a curve a little bit low. It had part of the plate, but dipped below the knees. Five, one ball, two strikes. Aka winds. His curve is a little bit high this time. Two and two. Aka trying to get Coma to swing at a bad pitch. Strike three. Jack Aker picking up his second strikeout. And that brings up that young man, Danny Walton, who has singled and home it. He's also struck out and fly to right. Getting his first two hits in the big league. Right hand bottom with good power on deck, Mike Egan. Aker's pitch to Walton, swing and a miss, strike one. again. Foul outside of third base. Frank Crisetti wisely jumps away from that one. Hit a little too hard. Nothing and two on Danny Walton. One out, nobody on. Top of the 11th ball, tied 3-3. Joe Puppetone back in action tonight. Peppy was used as a pinch hitter and he had a base hit taken away and a fine play by Hegan. There's a curve outside. A ball and two strikes. into the windup. Curve blown away and it's even at two and two. Same pattern he used on the leadoff man this inning, Wayne Cromer. Got ahead of him 0 and 2, nibbled on two pitches, got the count of two and two and then struck him out. The pitch, hard ground ball, nice play by Kenny. One hands it, fires to first, they got him. Fine play by Jerry Kenny. Two out. The batter now, Mike Hegan. Mike has not been a bat in this game. He went in as a pinch runner for Greg Goosen in the ninth inning. Stayed in the game at first base. Two out, nobody on. Left hand hitting Mike Hegan. Aker's pitch low and away, ball one. Jack will try and keep that ball away from Hagan if he possibly can. Mike hit that tremendous home run off Steve Hamilton yesterday. A 1-0 pitch, swing and a foul tip, 1-1. One one. Mike Hagan has a beautiful build. Coordinated. One ball, one strike, two out. Outside, two and one. Why? Well, there's really no great mystery about it. 
Fields, you know, is a real draft beer, and draft beer tastes like it. It doesn't leave you with a build-up feeling. What Fields does do is give you smooth, fresh taste every time. And taste, after all, is the name of the game. Once you try Fields Real Draft, you'll understand why no other beer in the 1969 taste test could beat it. Fields Real Draft, the beer with a winning taste. And as Doug Elworth put it, it doesn't leave you feeling like a balloon. In the bottom of the 11th inning, it'll be Ron Woods, Jerry Kenny, and Joe Pepitone to face Diego Segui. Uh, Ron Woods has fly to center, foul to the catcher, bounce to third, and hit to the box. Been excellent pitching tonight all the way around on uh, both teams. Steve Barber, Bob Locker, and Diego Segui for the pilots. And for the Yankees, Al Downing and Jack Aker. All right, as we get ready for the bottom of the 11th, here is Frank Messer. Good enough, Bill Rizzuto. Thank you very much. Ron Woods will lead it off for the Yankees. The game's first pitch is butted down the first baseline, and Woods... for Woods, but Ronnie scooted past him, and Woods is on with a leadoff punt single here in the bottom half of the 11th inning. And now Jerry Kenny. Kenny Walk leading off the ninth. Came in to score the tying run on a base hit by Horace Clark. against Woods at first base. The Yankees have their ninth hit in the game. There's a throw to first, and Woods is back. Harper, hit on the grass down the line at third, looking for a punt from Kenny. Pepitone is on deck. Here's the pitch. Kenny bunts it toward the mound. Segui has it, throws to first, where Hegan takes the throw, and Woods goes to second on the sacrifice.
to get him home. Horace Clark comes out on deck. Three to three ball game in the bottom half of the 11th inning. Kenny, the runner at second. And the pitch. Long out and missed. A curveball. Jerry Kenny at second base, looking in over the pitcher's shoulder, trying to pick up the sign. Or rather, uh, Ron Woods at second base, looking over Segui's shoulder. Check swing, and the pitch is low. Maloney serves it the ball. And now Segui coming down from the mound, asking plate umpire George Maloney to check with the third base umpire, Larry Barnett, on that swing. Maloney says, it's a ball. I call to the ball. To the ball, it stays. One and one. Woods at second. Pepitone at first. Edge away. And the pitch. Get on the ground, slowly towards second. Fired to the shortstop for one, back to first, no double play. Donaldson to Clark, forces Pepitone. Chauvet beats the relay at first base. Woods goes to third, and right now on New York Yankee baseball, we pause for station identification. This is your guy, High Agent. Join me afternoons from 3 to 7 for a little bit of something else right here on WGY Radio 81, Schenectady. The batter is Bobby Mercer. Mercer has one hit tonight, and it went all the way to the right field seats. His 22nd home run of the year, which tied the ball game at 2-2 to two in the sixth inning. back and forth waiting. And the pitch to him. Inside. Ball one. Bottom half of the 12th. Tied up three to three. Next pitch. Low and away. leads at first. Egan is backed off. The 2-0 pitch to Mercer. Strike one is called. And the count is 2-1. And, and 2-1 deal. Mercer lines it through the hole in the right field base hit. Fernandez stops at second base as Cover fires back in. So the Yankees have runners at first and second with two outs. The batter will be Ron Woods. Woods beat out a bunt leading off the 11th inning. So he is one for five. He goes out to talk to O'Donoghue. At the moment, Rod Carew of the Minnesota Twins does not have enough official at-bats to qualify in the batting race as of this moment. So the American League's top hitter right now is Frank Robinson of Baltimore hitting 321. Message flashed on the scoreboard. Conference breaks up. We're ready to go. O'Donoghue to Woods. And the first pitch, Ronnie hits it on the ground to short. Clark is up with it, fires to second base in time to force Mercer, and the side is retired. For the Yankees, no runs, a base hit, no errors, and two men are left. And at the end of 12 full innings, the score, the Yankees three and the Seattle Pilots three. On September 20th, Grambling College will play Morgan State College here at Yankee Stadium. 
in the second annual Invitational Football Classic. Net proceeds from this game, sponsored by the Football Coaches Foundation, will be donated to the Street Academy program of the New York Urban League to help give deprived youngsters a chance at a decent education and a good future. Tickets are now on sale at Yankee Stadium, Yankee PRS ticket offices, at Grand Central Station, Schraff's Restaurants, selected branches of First National City Bank, and the Freedom National Bank in Harlem. Tickets are priced at $8.50, $5.50, and $3.50. Get your tickets now to see a great football game, and at the same time, help give a youngster hope for his future. That's Grambling College at Morgan State, football September 20th. Pilots in the top half of the 13th inning, and he'll be facing the top of the batting order. Tommy Harper to lead it off. Harper is one for five. He'll be followed by Hopley and Comer. Pitch is fouled back on the screen, strike one. Harper is struck out, hit back to the pitcher, lined to third, fouled out to the catcher, and single. After his single in the tenth inning, he was thrown out, trying to steal second. Fernandez to Michael. Bonson deals again. Curve ball over the outside corner, strike two. Nothing and two on Tommy Harper. working quickly. Cuts it loose again. Another breaking pitch. This one outside. One ball and two strikes. Kenny at third, hugging the line, but behind the bag against Harper now with uh, one ball, two strike count on him. Michael and Clark up the middle. Outfield fanned out. One, two pitch coming. It's high. Two balls, two strikes. into the upper deck. Count holds two and two. Fans sort of quiet right now. As the 2-2 pitch comes in, it's low ball three. So the string runs out between Bonson and Tommy Harper. Pitch to Harper. Popped up. Out into shallow right. Clark, Pepitone, and Mercer all digging. And Clark makes the catch. Good running catch over the shoulder by Horace Clark. Harper is retired. One away, and the batter will be Steve Hobley, the center fielder. He has got 0 for 5, striking out twice. Stand hitter. Stan Bonson, the third Yankee pitcher used, downing work nine, acre two. This is Bonson's second inning. His pitch to the left hand hitting Hobley is high, bounces out of the mid of Frank Fernandez, and rolls off to the right side of the plate. One ball and no strikes. deck on the third base side. Get upstairs, bounce back down. One of the fans down there was ready for it, made the catch. A ball on a strike to Hobley. Wayne Comer is on deck. 1-1 pitch coming. It is fouled back on the ground. One ball and two strikes.
the base is empty. Top half of the 13th inning. Watson's 1-2 pitch. Foul back again to the upper deck behind the plate this time. And throws again, and he's low with this one. Two balls, two strikes. Two-two delivery. Fastball foul back. pitcher this year. He misses high and outside ball three and the count is full three and two. Bonson has started 30 games. He's won seven, lost 13. His next pitch foul back again right in front of the press box. Count holds at three and two. comes. Fastball is inside ball four. Bonson loses only. That is the first walk given up by Stan Bonson. Third walk issued by Yankee Pitching. And now Wayne Comer, the right fielder, a right-hand batter. Comer is over for 4. Drew one walk from Al Downing. Downing also struck him out once. Akers struck him out once. Bonson's pitch to him. Taken for a strike call. Comer steps away, talking to plate umpire George Maloney. Michael and Clark shorten up at double play depth. Kenny at third, near the line, behind the bag. Pepitone holding, hopefully out at first. Here's the pitch. It's in the dirt. Blocked nicely by Frank Fernandez. One ball, one strike. Outfield is fanned out against Wayne Comer with Roy White, the deep man, in left field. by Bonson. The 1-1 pitch. Breaking pitch is low and it's two balls and one strike. Danny Walton, the left fielder, is on deck. Hopefully leads away from first. He goes. The pitch is high and tight. The throw to second base. Michaels got him. He's out. Head first slide. And hopefully is thrown out by Fernandez as Comer hit the dirt to get away from a pitch that was up under his chin. Three balls and one strike. Second base runner that's tried it on Fernandez. Second time he's thrown one out. Three and one now to Wayne Comer with the bases empty and two away. Pitches it on the ground to Kenny, and he tried to backhand it. It got through him and down in the left field corner. Comer running hard will go for two, and he's in standing at second base. A double. Kenny reached across his body, tried to backhand it, and it skipped past him and down to the left field corner for a two-base hit. Two outs, and Comer at second. Danny Walton moves in. Walton has had two hits tonight, a single and a home run. The 
single was his first major league hit, and the homer was, of course, his first major league home run. He's a right-hand batter. Curve low and outside, ball one. That is the second hit given up by Bonson. The other a single by John Donaldson in the 12th inning. Three to three ball game in the top of the 13th. 1-0 pitch. High, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Roy White plays deep in left field against Walton. Ron Wood straight away in center. Mercer is shaded toward the alley in right center field. Infield is deep with Gene Michael just about midway between second and third. Clark backed off near the grass. Jerry Kenny not too close to the line. And back behind third. Pitch coming. Strike gets the outside corner. Two and one. Two outs. And the pitch swung on and missed. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes to Danny Walton. Two strike pitch. 
Kenny takes it over, but low, and McNerney thought that might have been strike three. He started to throw down to Harper at third. One ball and two strikes. Harper, incidentally, with two strikes on Kenny, has backed off. Playing just about even with the bag. He could almost reach out with his right foot and touch the bag at third. One-two pitch. Check swing, boss it is short. Up with a clock to throw to first base in time, and Kenny is out. Stan Bonson. Horace 
o'clock is on deck. They are pitch. Foul back off the mask of George Maloney, the plate umpire. Up there, and he was taking a quick, long look. A 
Let me take a quick long look, a hard long look at Frank Crescetti to see just what the crow wanted. If the bunt sign isn't in order, that means McNerney will try to hit behind the runner. But in a case like this in the 14th inning, nobody out. The potential winning run at second base, you can almost bet a sacrifice will be in order. Bonson, though, is a tough man to bunt against with that high, hard one. Pepitone moving in at first. McNerney squares and takes it high for a ball. Now McNerney taking another look at Cressetti. Sometimes a manager will switch around. The punt is almost in order at this point. You just got to do it. In the air, foul back, one and one. Jerry McNerdney squared around, got under the ball. Now another long look at Frank Cressetti. Joe Schultz want right now. He wants to get the runner to third. McNerney squares again and takes a curveball in there. Strike two. Stan Bonson crossed up Jerry McNerney. One ball, two strikes. So now McNerney is in a spot. So unless he's an outstanding punter, where he will almost have to take a shot at the ball. the want of a simple bunt. That times games can change. The one-two pitch of McNerney takes it low. Fernandez knocked the ball down and kind of sat on it. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Seattle three, the Yankees three, both teams with ten base hits. Pitchers of record. Stan Boston for the Yankees. John O'Donoghue for the Pilots. Boston ready once again at the belt. Checks the runner. The 2-2 pitch. Swung on a foul hard on the left side. The count remains 2-2. Two and two. McNerney guarding the play, trying to get a piece of the ball. And preferably, if he can, to hit it to the right side so he can move the runner, Egan, to third. On deck, John Donaldson. The 2-2 pitch again. Right field, Pepitone drops the ball. But makes the play, and even though he dropped the ball, the runner, Egan, had to go back and could not advance. Joe Pepitone knocked it down, dropped it, picked it up, and got McNerney. And because the ball looked like it was going to be caught, Hegan could not advance, and he has to hold it second. So Joe Pepitone recovers in time to get McNerty, and now here's John Donaldson. Mike Hegan representing the winning run at second base. 3-3 three, three tie, 14th inning. at the belt, sets and delivers, and Donaldson hits one on the ground to Clark at second, who gobbles this one up. The throw is in time. Over to third base goes Mike Hegan. And the batter now was to be the shortstop, Ron Clark, but it looks as though we're going to have a pinch hitter for Clark. Merritt Renu, a catcher, coming on, a left-hand hitter to bat for the shortstop, Ron Clark. the Cardinals the next innings, 7-6. to six. Here is Merritt Thomas Renu, a catcher, 31 years old, born in Albany, Georgia. Began his pro career back in 1957. Played briefly for Houston, Chicago, and Milwaukee, California, and now with the Pilots. Third base, Mike Hegan. Merritt Renew. 
pinch hitting for the catcher or for the uh, shortstop, Ron Clark. Two out. Bonson waiting into the windup now. The first pitch to Randu is hit into center field, a base hit. One pitch and a solid single by Renu. And the Pilots once again take the lead in the bottom of the 14th inning. Merritt Renu just stroked that fastball solidly into center field. And Seattle moves out in front again. For Renu, he was batting at 230. That's his 18th base hit in his 75th at bat. Now John O'Donohue, the pitcher, comes on. Renu at first base, two down. Seattle leading four to three. The first pitch is right in there for a strike. That ball was really pickled. Renu stroked it beautifully. It was a pitch belt high away, and he got a hold of it. There's a swing and a miss by O'Donohue for strike two. Looking ahead. To the Yankees, it'll be the top of the batting order. Clark, Michael, and White going up against John O'Donohue. Stein Monson ready again at the belt. Checks the runner, the two-strike pitch. A chopper up the middle. Clark behind second, makes the play, touches the bag, and the side is retired. For the Pilots, one run, two base hits, one man left. The score after 13 and a half innings of play at Seattle 4 and the Yankees 3. Say, would you trade four pieces of silver for four pieces of steel? Now, before you answer that, maybe you ought to hear about the steel. It's stainless steel tableware in a beautiful four-piece play setting, now available at participating Atlantic dealers when you buy eight gallons of gasoline. For just four pieces of silver, well, four 25-cent pieces, your Atlantic dealer will give you four pieces of rugged stainless steel tableware. Knife, dinner fork, salad fork, and teaspoon. And just because he's feeling generous these days, he'll toss in an extra teaspoon absolutely free and give you a penny back for good luck. Get all the stainless tableware you need for only 99 cents a plate setting at your Atlantic station now. Accessory pieces are available too, also at a special low price. And you can charge it all on your Atlantic Richfield credit card. This offer may vary in some states. John O'Donoghue now warming up, and it'll be Horace Clark, Gene Michael, and Roy White going up against the big left-hander. Ray Euler has gone in. Replacing Ron Clark as the shortstop. Clark went out of the game for the pinch hitter, Merritt Renu. So Euler comes in as a defensive measure here in the bottom of the 14th. Horace Clark so far in this ball game, walked twice, singled twice, fly to center, passed the first, and it was White in the ninth inning that tied it up. I mean, uh, Clark single in the ninth inning that tied it up. Uh, kept this ball game going as we have it right now into the 14th. Morris Clark from the right side facing the left-handed O'Donoghue and the first pitch is on the ground foul on the left side. Strike one. The pitch is fouled off in front of us for strike two. Clark's the kind of a guy you like to get on. He's got the speed. again, and Clark takes it outside. A ball and two strikes. Clark drills one to left field. He's got his third base hit of the night, and the fifth time he's been on. Horace Clark opens up 
the bottom of the 14th with a line single to left field. Oh, is he hot. Clark is three for five officially on the night, but he's also walked twice. So he's been on base five out of the eight times he's been up there. Now it's Gene Michael coming in. But before he gets a chance to look at a pitch, here comes Joe Schultz out of the pilot dugout. California two to nothing. The winner was Hannon and the loser was Messersmith. Home runs in that game. May his eighth for the Senators. And Frank Howard hit his 43rd. He's only two behind Reggie Jackson right now. We're going to have a pitching change, and that'll be all for John O'Donohue. In the second game, called after five and a half innings of play, it was the Senators three and California two. The winner was Carlos and the loser was McLaughlin. The White Sox jumped all over the Baltimore Orioles, 10-3. Gary Peters got the win, and Dave McNally the loss. Boog Powell hit his 35th of the year for the Orioles. Oakland at Boston was postponed because of rain, and they'll play a doubleheader tomorrow, the first game starting at 11 o'clock. Minnesota 5, Cleveland 2. They're playing the bottom of the eighth. Keon, Hennigan, and Paul for the Indians. Paul and Knudsen, no, Woodson, rather, for the Twins. Kansas City beat Detroit 6-2. The winner was Nelson and the loser, Lulich. Trash hit his 11th and Northrop his 19th. The Mets won the Dodgers nothing after three. Clendenin hit a six of the year in the first for New York as Gentry against Sutton. In the suspended game, Cubs 5, Cincinnati 4. The winner was Nye, the loser, Arrigo. In the regulation game, Cubs 8, Cincinnati 2. They're playing the bottom of the ninth. Kessinger hit a home run for Chicago. Jenkins has been in there all the way for the Cubs. Big Gene Braybender comes on to do the pitching for the Pilots now. Philadelphia nothing, San Diego nothing after two and a half. Champion against Sis. Final score, Houston 7 and the Cardinals 6. That was... An 11-inning ball game. That's all the action we've got right now. And here at Yankee Stadium, the Pilots are leading 4-3. to three. We're in the 14th inning. Clark has just knocked O'Donoghue out with a line single. The left field to open up the 14th. And big Gene Brabender will go up against Gene Michael, Roy White, and Frank Fernandez. Bender is one of those guys that looks like he eats nails. He is really big. Let's see what his record is. Rob Bender is appearing in his 34th game. He's won 10 and lost 11 and has a 4.35 earned run average. The Pilots as a team have an earned run average of 4.59, but I think you've got to take into consideration the park that they play in. Talk about a band box. Ebbets Field would look like Yankee Stadium alongside of Six Stadium. And that was one of the smallest parks in baseball, Ebbets Field. But Six Stadium is really tiny. Here's Michael Clark at first. Rob Bender, who can't hold anybody on. Sets delivers, and Michael bunts it. Foul on the left side. Gene Rob Bender is a guy that, uh, if you can run at all, you'll steal second base. tight at third base. Yankees trailing by a run, four to three. Rob Bender, the big right-hander, kicks, delivers, and Michael squares and takes outside, one and one. Rob Bender wears those glasses. He's six feet, five and a half, 220 pounds. Representing the tying run at first. Egan holding against him. Pilot infield, very tight. Looking for a bunt. Ready for the double play ball. The 1-1 one -one delivery. Michael swings and slices it foul. 
One ball, two strikes. Gene Brabender getting a sign once again from McNerney. He's got it at the belt. Clark leading off. The one-two pitch to Michael is chopped foul on the left side, and it holds one ball, two strikes. Gene just got a piece of a hard slider. That ball would have nipped the outside corner, and Michael, just protecting himself, gains a new life by getting a piece of it. Michael takes it to throw, not in time, and Horace steals second base. So Gene Brabender, who has a lot of trouble holding men on, is clipped for a stolen base by Horace Clark, his 25th. And it could be a big one. It's two balls and two strikes now to Gene Michael. Two-two pitch. Three and two. Three balls and two strikes on deck. Roy White. Gene Brabender ready again. The payoff pitch. He sets. Michael waits. Here it comes. Gene hits it to the second baseman, Donaldson. The throw goes to first, but moving to third base with a tying run is Morris Clark. A stolen base, and now the ground out by Gene Michael moves Clark to third with only one away, and here's Roy White. So the Yankees scrambling back again, and the Seattle infield comes in tight. the hitter from the left side. Clark at third. Look for anything. Brabender into the lineup. The pitch high top. Right side. That could be into the seat. No, he can. May have a shot. He can't quite make it. So with the count of one strike on Roy White, it's New York Yankee baseball. We pause for station identification. This is your guy, High Agents. Join me afternoons from 3 to 7 for a little bit of something else. Right here on WGY Radio 81, Schenectady. Gene Brabender, a one-strike count on White. He's ready. Here's the pitch way outside. He sort of shot-footed that ball, a miss. It's one and one. Keegan, very tight at first. Donaldson the same at second. Harper, shallow at third. They're looking for anything. One ball, one strike. Roy White swings that bat. Rob Bender into the windup. Here's the pitch. Foul back for a ball and two strikes. So that pretty much takes away the squeeze opportunity for the Yankees. Both teams have 11 base hits. But the Pilots are leading 4-3, to three, and the Yankees have the tying run at third in the bottom of the fourth inning with only one down. Roy White. Waiting. Rob Bender. Wines deals. There's a high pop behind the plate, and that's coming back on the screen. Gene Rob Bender began his pro career in 1961. One time to the Dodgers, and then to the Orioles, and now to the Pilots. He's a big man with glasses. Is it the one-two pitch to White? A one-hopper. Donaldson has it. Clark is hung up between the plate and third. 
The throw to Harper now. The race is on. Now it's back to Brobbender. Clark still alive. Brobbender flips to Euler. And wait a minute. There's interference. And Clark will score. Clark scores on interference. Interference is called on Brobbender. And there's a Donnie Brook at third base surrounding Larry Barnett. Oh, baby. Morris Clark is awarded home plate. On interference by the pitcher Brobender. And there are at least eight or nine men around Larry Barnett out there. And they're claiming that Clark was out of the baseline anyway and hit Barnett, or rather hit Brobender, who was also out of the baseline. Morris Clark is awarded home on an interference or an obstruction call, depending on how you want to look at it. And the Yankees tied up again in the bottom of the fourth inning, a 14th inning. Joe Schultz and Larry Barnett and Ed Runge, now George Maloney, are really going to it. And now Schultz has been tossed out of the ball game by Larry Barnett. And Schultz is purple in the face. I'll tell you, he's so mad he could explode. He is physically holding him off of Larry Barnett. Larry Barnett called obstruction on the pitcher, Gene Brabender. And Morris Clark was awarded home plate after he'd been tagged out by Ray Euler. So the Yankees tied up, still only one out, at second base is Roy White. The fielder's choice. He went to second on the rundown of Clark. I never saw an umpire gather a crowd like that so quick in my life. The entire Seattle ball club was out there. They jumped all over. Larry Barnett and Ed Rungi, the senior man on this crew, went out there to calm things down. Schultz has been ejected from the game, but so far he has not budged an inch. He's still out there arguing. The argument, as far as the pilots are concerned, is that Clark was well out of the baseline, into the grass, when he bumped Gene Brabender, or Brabender jumped, bumped him. This is the judgment of the umpire. And Schultz won't give up. He's after Barnett again. Joe Schultz still standing out there. This thing has been going on for over five minutes. I do know one thing, as it stands right now, the Yankees have tied this ball game up, and they have the winning run at second base right now, and Schultz and Barnett are still tangling out there. And now Joe Schultz leaves the field. They got Clark in a rundown. Third base umpire Larry Barnett ruled that Gene Brabender was guilty of obstruction. And that Horace Clark was awarded home plate. We're waiting to see whether or not Brabender will be charged with an error. occurs if you interfere with a base runner when you're not in the act of tagging him out with a ball, if you're just standing around. Now Frank Fernandez moves in with Roy White at second base, and we're all tied up again on the 14th inning.
third inning after one o'clock here at Yankee Stadium. And it's 12.07 right now. The way we're going, we may get to one o'clock. Here's Fernandez, White at second base. An attempted at pickoff at second, doesn't work. tonight, the Yankees have tied the ball game when well, they were behind. They did it in the ninth, and now in the 14th. Fernandez takes low and outside, ball one. Any inning that starts before 1 o'clock can be completed. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fernandez takes inside. Two balls, no strikes. The sign says that Clark is awarded home on an obstruction play, and if that's the case, then Brabender will be charged with an error. Now Sal Magley is coming out of the pilot dugout. Magley, the pitching coach, wants to talk to Brabender. Brabender is unnerved right now. He is totally upset over what happened. Because he was the man who was guilty of obstruction. And because of it, Clark was awarded home and the ball game's tied up. Instead of having two out and a runner at second, there's one out, a tie ball game. And a 2-0 count on Frank Fernandez. Two balls, no strikes. Frank waiting. White moving off second. Here's the pitch. Swung on a miss. Strike one. Swing and a miss by Fernandez. Strike two. Two strikes. The next one. Check swing foul. The count holds at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. One run in. Four four tie. The last half of the fourteenth inning. Fernandez waiting. Rob Benner, the 2-2 pitch, it's low for 3-2. Two. Rob Bender, ready once again now. The payoff pitch on the way to Fernandez. Here it comes, and did it hit him? No, it did, but it's ball four. Down to first base goes Fernandez. White at second, and the batter will be Bobby Mercer. Well, they have finally charged the pitcher, Gene Brabender, with an error on the obstruction play. Here's Bobby Mercer. He takes one right in there, strike one. Mercer waiting, the one strike pitch. Curve is outside, one and one. Oh, we've had a wild one tonight. Everything and anything has happened in this ballgame. Haven't missed a trick. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Fouled off by Mercer. A ball and two strikes. Now the 1-2 pitch. 
Vander kicks, delivers, and Mercer drills one hard to Donaldson at second, a one hop to Euler, back to first double play. So we go into the 15th inning as Mercer bounces into a double play, 4 6 3. After 14 full innings of play, Seattle 4, the Yankees 4.
about a 3-1 pitch coming up. Boston has it. And he starts to go to second base and then goes to first and over to third. Goes Tommy Harper. He had Harper dead to right. But then deciding not to gamble, he wanted to get the second out. He gets Colbert at first base, one to three. Now it'll be up to young Danny Walton to see what he can do. We're in the 15th inning. I think we just lost our statistician, Bill Kane. Bill tripped over something and almost knocked the camera off its hinges down there. Two out. Danny Walton, the batter. At third base, Tommy Harper. The pitch to Walton fouled off. Right side hits the facade of the upper deck and kicks back on the field. We're getting our third rendition of the rundown on the obstruction play. They've got a, uh, a tape playback. And they play it back for the writers so they can write their stories more accurately than the broadcasters can broadcast. Because, you know, when you see something, you don't see everything. But when you see it back again, you get a much better chance. Harper started to go and then goes back. And Boston delivers high for a ball. One and one. Now Gene Michael goes in to settle Stan Bonson down. Two outs. One and one the count on Danny Walt. Tommy Harper at third. 4-4 tie. Top of the 15th inning. Boston ready. Winds. The pitch to Walton. Swings and misses at a curveball. Strike two. He really went after it. two pitch as Walton waits. Low, two and two. We told you earlier, if you went away for a moment, that there was a curfew at one o'clock, no inning to be started after one, but because this is the last meeting of the year between these two ball clubs, this has been waived, and we will go to a conclusion. Here's the two-two pitch to Walton. High pop, right side. Pepito near the railing, can't get to it.
going to the bottom of the 15th, and it will be Ron Wood, Jerry Kenny, and Joe Pepitone going up against Gene Brabender, who managed to compose himself. I thought he was going to take that uh, Larry Barnett and uh, sort of shake his head off there for a while. Woods takes a strike. You know, I'll tell you, if I was an umpire and that prop bender came at me, I think I'd just back right off. I think I'd give in. Here's the one strike pitch to Woods. Curve is in there for strike two. Woods had a punch single in the 11th inning. We're in the 15th now, all tied for a piece. Two-strike delivery, drilled into left center, coming on fast as Hoagley, he can't get it, gets by him. Hey, Woods is on his way to second base. He's going to try for three, but then holds on and goes back to throw to second. Almost got him. Woods was undecided, decided for third, went back again and almost got nailed on the relay. A leadoff double by Ron Woods in the 15th inning, and the Yankees are smoking again. at second base. That ball got by Hobley. In fact, he should have stopped it. I don't know what happened. He just didn't seem to bend over. The ball got by him. Kenny takes high for ball one. pitch as Kenny waits. Rob Ender sets and kicks and Kenny takes outside 2-0. On deck, Joe Pepitone. The 2-0 pitch. Kenny waits, swings and misses, and he went around and the bat didn't, it seems. I'll tell you. Jerry holds that bat right on the end, and when he goes, everything goes. It looks like he follows the bat because he holds it on the end. He's just a little guy. He takes a big, vicious cut. Now the 2-1 pitch. Rob Bender to Kenny, fouls it off on the left side, and then will drift into the seats out of play for 2-2. Two and two. The Yankees have battled back twice. In the ninth inning, they were trailing 3-2. to two. Clark got a single to tie it up 3-3. Three, three. In the 14th inning, they were trailing 4-3. to three. And on the obstruction call on Horace Clark, the obstruction call charged at Gene Brabender. The Yankees have tied it up, and now they've got a chance to win it in the bottom of the 15th. Brabender, the 2-2 pitch, and Kenny hits a ground ball into right field, a base hit. Here comes Woods. The throw not in time, and the Yankees win it 5-4. In the bottom of the 15th, a double by Woods, a single by Kenny, and the Yankees win it, and they also win the season series seven games to five against the Seattle Pilots. What a finish. At 12-26, the Yankees put it away. Final score, Yankees five and the Pilots four. Well, friends, you've got to see the faces on these kids when they have their birthday parties here at Yankee Stadium. It's really something. The excitement of just coming to the big ballpark and coming in and picking up your Carvel ice cream cake and favors and then going to your seats to enjoy the party and seeing his name and lights on the Yankee center field scoreboard. Well, sir, their faces just light up with joy. And whose face wouldn't? So why not plan to have your child's birthday party here, right at Yankee Stadium? And all you have to do is write to Yankee Birthday Party, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York, zip code number 10451. And you'll receive all the necessary information on how to order your tickets for your son's or daughter's party. Five runs, 13 hits, no errors. For the Pilots, four runs, 12 hits, and two errors. 
The winning pitcher in relief, Stan Bonson, his record now is 8-13. The loser in relief, Gene Brabender, his record 10 and 12. There were 25 hits in the ball game and over 400 pitches thrown as the game went nearly four and a half hours, including arguments. Well, once again, the final score in 15 innings, the Yankees five and the Pilots four. And now this is Jerry Coleman speaking for Phil Rizzuto and Frank Messer saying goodbye from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx.